Good morning, Pisces. <laughs> Welcome to Lotus Heart Tarot. So, um, guys, I, this is very, very early in the morning for me to be doing a reading. I <clears throat> did, I try to do a you and them reading um, once a month. I did one a few weeks ago, but it was censored. Um, like, I think because of my cards might have some pictures on them. So not a ton of people saw it, and I felt very, very guided, <clears throat> like, upon opening my eyes to get to my desk to do this. And I'm someone who really starts their day with a lot of rituals, and there I just threw them to the wind. We are going to get a look at your person's energy, we're going to get a look at your energy, and we're going to get a look at this connection. Um, we, the only limiting factor we have in this reading is the charge on my phone. If you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome. I'm very, very happy to have you here. These are general readings, so take what resonates and leave the rest. Yeah, Pisces. So the reason I feel like I felt called to this energy, oh my gosh, Pisces. <laughs> was because the energy around, I've been doing Pisces readings for years. Um, I have an all signs channel, which I've been reading for Pisces since like 2020 on YouTube. And um, this energy around you right now, and this energy of people being magnetized to you and people wanting to come back and people showing up. And I know the people are showing up because I'm getting email confirmations. I'm getting comment confirmations. I'm getting private reading confirmations. Um, so I do know that people from the past, people that you thought would never come back are in fact showing up like this is really happening. Um, and, but I understand the skepticism. I understand the doubt and remember these are general readings. So this isn't everyone's story all the time. Right? So, but I'm going to do your energy extensively here, Pisces. So, you know, if this is you, because it's you. So don't try to make anything fit. Don't try to make anything work. Sit back, relax, breathe, connect to your breath, and just allow your intuition to guide you for which messages are meant for you and which ones are not. And let's get through this. Let's try to get to the bottom of it. I've got stacks of cards behind me that I can use to clarify that I can use if I feel I need to. Um, this is my general setup, what I have here right now. And we're going to dive in. Pisces, I literally <laughs> wanted to roll away from my desk when I saw the lion spirit here. Again, heavy Leo energy. Um, this, this honestly, Leo energy is, this is someone who does take action. This is someone who is fiery and passionate. If, it, if you're not dealing with a Leo, I feel that you are dealing with someone who is in their Leo energy or in, you know, um, an energy that feels more like Leo than maybe their own sign. And, um, this is someone who is feeling something in their heart and is taking action on it. That's what it feels like. They're very focused on your energy here. Pisces, I feel like you're feeling a bit all over the place. I feel like it's like, you're kind of looking at your life. You're kind of looking at, it feels like you're working on something and you've been very focused on it. I feel like you have been kind of possibly building relationships or um, looking for ways to kind of collaborate with other people or, you know, um, share a vision and build something with someone else. I feel like you have been looking for ways to make the pieces fit or the pieces work. Some of you have been trying to make it work with someone whose pieces just don't work with yours, you know? Um, but you're, you're trying to figure out how to make them work. And, um, for others of you, I think this is just like, you're really, you're focused on work or possibly school or something. It's demanding a lot of your attention. And it may even be something where it's like, you feel as though you need help to accomplish what you're accomplishing, or, um, it, it requires you to just really focus on it. These two ants are in the shape and the directions, right. Of the fish in the Pisces, energy. So it, it kind of feels like you're in an energy where you feel like you don't have time for people who are going to play games, people who are going to mislead you, people who are going to try to take advantage of you. You're just, you're not open to those types of energies. And I feel like 
if some of you know that this person is really watching you, you're not paying attention to them. You're just like, okay, if you're going to sit here and play games and you're going to sit here and stare, I hope you like what you see. But you know, I'm not going to go take myself out of this cycle that I am working on and that I'm creating over here in order to even try to acknowledge you. On the bottom of the deck, the energy of the connection is the grasshopper spirit. This is the second time a grasshopper has come out for, I think it is even for the energy of the spirit. I mean, of the connection. Um, this is talking about taking a leap of faith, you all. So there is, I feel there is going to be an opportunity here to, between these, this masculine and this feminine. Um, so let's dive deeper, Pisces. This is what keeps coming out. I feel like there are some of you out there who are skeptical, um, and I don't blame you. And there are definitely some of you out there. This is not your story. You know, and don't try to make it fit. Don't try to confuse yourself. Don't try to like reopen your energy to someone that you've closed your energy off to by any means. Um, but for some of you, this is your story. Because <clears throat> guys, the same stuff just keeps coming out. Okay, you're dealing with someone here who is an overthinker. They may be someone with a bit of a fragile ego who's used to being a bit in control or, you know, they, they don't like to risk emotionally with this alpha energy. Um, I feel like this person is sort of looking, there's someone who is, they're looking to their future and they are kind of, with this exploring energy, I just, I get the sense of the two of wands and the three of wands. It's someone who has come to a place in their life where they're asking themselves, do I want to stay on the path that I'm on? Or, you know, do I want something different? And I feel like this person in the past has kind of stayed on the path they're on to avoid having to like express themselves or to have to be vulnerable. It may be someone who's really prioritized work because their emotions make them nervous or being vulnerable with another person has made them nervous in the past. This is someone who overthinks. So it's like, even if they were to get together with you and say all the most perfect things, they would walk away and be like, oh man, did they take it like this? Did they take it like that? Did this come across this way? Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, this is someone who's very self-critical, which kind of makes me believe that either they were like emotionally neglected or had a very critical parent or a spouse or relationship. It, it, this is something that where this person, it's like they may even struggle really to be alone or to be by themselves because, you know, in order to be by yourself, you have to be willing to face yourself. You have to be open to your own truth, you know, otherwise you'll do that. Um, but I see that this person, they, you may have been with this person in the past and they may have been very toxic and very selfish. Um, this feels like someone again, who is trying to escape. They may have always been an overthinker and in order to not overthink or in o order to loosen up and have a good time or to be, I'm, I don't know why I'm getting this, but like age appropriate, um, like do what's expected of them at that age, like possibly go out drinking or, you know, hang out with the guys or like whatever this energy is. It's like, they have to drinks have to be involved because otherwise this person is so in their head that they're awkward and uncomfortable. That's how it feels. So take it as it resonates. It's someone that I feel like comes across selfishly and they may be selfish, but when your mind is this occupied with yourself, with everything that you're saying, with how people are taking you, with how people are interpreting your actions, your behavior, your words, you, you, you don't have space to think about other people. Your mind is completely consumed with the mistakes that you're making every breath that you're taking. You know what I'm saying? Like evaluating and criticizing and judging you constantly. So yeah, you are sort of self-centered in that energy. All right. But this is definitely someone who <laughs> they are, they are in an energy of kind of standing at the same crossroads they always come to and asking themselves, am I going to choose another cycle of this or am I going to choose something different, something that I have shied away from in the past? With this Leo energy, <clears throat> Leos have the biggest heart and they are, um, they are 
leaders, you know, they are, um, generous of spirit when they're in the light, you know, they, they are expressive, they are loving, they are, you know, they can do anything from surprise you with an amazingly planned out date to, um, poetry to, you know, they're very, they can be very romantic. Um, and, it's like, I, I feel this person is thinks to themselves every time they get to this crossroads where it's like, do I choose the same path that I have been choosing or do I make a different choice at this crossroads? Their, their choices between do I, do I, do I contact this feminine or, um, do I just stay with the bros, you know what I mean? Or whatever this energy is. This could be them drinking by themselves, you know, just only caring about themselves, overthinking by themselves. Th that could be, but this could also be someone who is escaping through possibly toxic friendships or toxic behavior. This person at this moment is, they're in a different level of awareness than they have been in in the past. I think they're aware of how making this choice is kind of affecting their life. And I think they are really, really questioning if they really want to double down for another cycle of this. I think they're really looking at this and really considering what would have to happen for them to make this move or to make this choice to choose differently than they have been choosing. Remember, the energy of the connection is an opportunity to take a leap of faith. So that's what would be required. This masculine would have to take a leap of faith to take to make this choice, to make this decision. Oh, we have two more cards. Oh my God. Yes. Look at this. They're, they're, they're looking at the way having this fragile ego. We see that with the alpha male here. Not all alpha males have fragile egos, but <laughs> I mean... <clears throat> All right, I'll just leave that there. Um, there's this energy of, I don't want to get hurt. There's this energy of, I don't want to look stupid. But also, there is this energy of, like, I would like to be in a happy relationship. I would like to have someone to celebrate my wins with, someone I could rely on, someone to come home to, someone that you know, where I'm not by myself and I'm not with the bros. I would like to have something here that offers my life another dimension or something more, something deeper, something bigger. Um, and this is the choice. Do I stay here protecting my ego or do I open up to, 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 to something that I know I eventually want and the person that I know I see myself with, um, or do I stay here in this toxicity and this confusion and this mental haze? All right, let's look at her energy. Pisces, you know that this person is attracted to you. I feel like you do. I feel like you know that there are, or the feminine knows that this masculine is really attracted to her and, and really into her. Um, and she may at times use that to her advantage or, you know, play with it a little bit to see if they get a different reaction or if they get a reaction. Um, because there is this understanding of, I, I know you think I'm attractive or I know that you have a hard time refusing me. Um, and so it is almost like the only exposed vulnerable spot for this feminine to kind of get into this masculine's head. Um, 
this this feminine is annoyed. This feminine has, I feel like, really evaluated why. I think she's evaluated every single thing she has ever thought about this masculine. I think she's gone over it. Like, am I being delusional? Or is this real? Could this be true? Or am I just, you know, off wishful thinking or, you know, being a Pisces and being in Neptunian energy and just living in a fantasy land? And I feel like the feminine has really worked hard to be practical, to be grounded, to not allow herself to really go down the make-believe path. Um, that everything's going to be okay. Um, I, but I think the, the feminine feels the energy of this masculine breathing down her neck and it's annoying. It's annoying because who in the world would want someone breathing down their neck? Nobody. Nobody wants that. Nobody really does. It's an uncomfortable and awkward feeling. Either make a move and take some action or, you know, turn around and go the other way because right now you're just kind of an energy in my energetic field that is preventing me from really being 100% liberated and free. You're, you're affecting me and I'm not asking you to. I'm over here working and focusing and trying to do these things. Yeah, I might mess with you here and there every once in a while, but it's really because I'm like, you're breathing down my neck, dude. Either make a move or go away. And I think the masculine does a lot of times choose to go away and chooses another karmic cycle of this toxic crap that they're living in this escape thing to escape themselves. Um, for some of you, they may even really go to the gym and really work out a lot in order to, you know, get out of their head. You also have the twin flame energy underneath that you guys. Um, but it's like this feminine is receptive to this masculine in that, if this masculine really wants to show up and this feminine, I feel has probably told this masculine what she needs or has kind of made it clear, like don't come back unless this, this, and this. And if this masculine is just standing here staring at her, you know what I mean? And not coming back, that's that having that presence there, it, it eventually this feminine is going to get over this masculine and is going to be like, no, you know, I, I'm just completely not interested. I do not care. You've played too many games. You have been not serious too many times. You, you have kind of put yourself in my energy and then not been willing to show up the way that I've told you is acceptable. So you're, it, it's kind of like, you know, um, if you consider energy and energy flow, like a doorway, this feminine has this masculine standing in her doorway. It's not letting new energy come in. It's not letting old energy move out. It's just blocking the flow. And, and they're not, they, they will eventually recede and go off and, and be toxic again, or they're going to show up. And this feminine is just, Really, it's like it becomes unattractive. I'll just say that. It really does. It becomes unattractive. This feminine is trying to leave her door open because she's receptive to having a partnership. She would also like this. She shares the same goal as the masculine, um, but, but she's not forcing it, not clinging to it. She's chilled out over here, looking toward the future, watching for any other ships that may be coming in because her back is turned to this energy because this energy has proven a few times it's not reliable. You know what I mean? It's not really taking action. It's just being this presence, this blockage is how it really feels you guys. All right. So, but I feel things are changing. I feel like, well, this, this masculine is definitely at a crossroads and has to make some kind of decision. Am I doubling down? Am I choosing toxicity again? Or am I really going to go for this feminine? This feminine is chill and is open, but is, you know, getting really annoyed. She's had to completely adjust her way of thinking. She's had to evaluate, am I delusional? With a freaking masculine standing right here, breathing down her neck. She's had to ask herself, am I crazy? Because this masculine is being like, 
you know, half in, half out. And so it's like, are any time this feminine were to start to believe in this masculine, this masculine probably chooses the toxic route. And so this feminine is disappointed again and again. They're annoyed, you know? All right, let's, um, let's dive into the tarot, guys. Actually, before we dive into the tarot, let me look at this connection. What is the energy of this connection? What do we have going on in here, spirit? There's obviously a very strong pull. There's obviously a very strong attraction between these two. Um, but I feel like we're past the point of, I think you're hot, let's hook up. You know, I think that too much has happened here. I don't think that that's a possibility. Maybe it is for some of you. Oh my gosh, you guys, seriously, past life soulmate, you've had many past lives together, destiny, in divine timing, attract and telepathy. <laughs> you have set your intentions high and know you deserve to receive love, joy, and happiness. I feel like this is what this feminine is doing. This feminine is like, you know, I have standards. I know that I deserve love. I deserve joy and I deserve happiness. I think this masculine on some level is also, you know, aware of that, that like they would like to have that. I'm not so sure that the masculine is like, I deserve that, <laughs> you know, as much as the feminine is like, I, that's what I'm putting out. So I deserve to receive it in return. This masculine is a little more questionable. We have telepathy. This connection has a strong empathetic and telepathic soul bond. That's why the feminine feels the masculine breathing down her freaking neck and not showing up. And when you feel someone that strong energetically and they never show up, you start really asking yourself, am I delusional? That's not nice. It's not nice for this masculine to do that to that feminine. It's not kind. That karma is going to come back to this masculine. It's not nice. Okay. Um, we have soul imprints, unresolved wounds, karmic patterns, and inheritances are affecting this situation. So we're both coming to the table with baggage, not only our own baggage and not only the baggage that we have already built in this connection, but we're also coming with the baggage of our ancestors. This is coming up a lot right now. It's coming up a lot, like in private readings, it's coming up a lot. This is an opportunity for a lot of people who are cycle breakers, who part of their sole purpose is to be a cycle breaker. They're becoming aware of the cycles. Like if you look at your parents and your grandparents and stuff like that, and you see certain cycles that have been passed down generation to generation, and it you have the presence of mind to see it, and you have the strong desire within you to not follow that path or to not participate in that energy, chances are you could be a cycle breaker. And that's something that, you know, pay attention to that. I, I am a cycle breaker. And, um, the, the, the more you open to that energy and the more you are willing to take the consequence, being a cycle breaker is not an easy thing to do, but when, when you open yourself to it completely and you just go ahead and do it, wow, the freedom, the happiness, the, all of it, that's been my experience is what comes after that. So there's definitely an opportunity for both of these people to probably be cycle breakers or to break some kind of pattern or cycle and that has been passed down to them. There's a lot of baggage here. There's a lot of like complicated issues. This is a deep soul contract, which honestly, you guys is a huge opportunity to do a lot of soul work. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it is an opportunity. It is in its own way, a blessing. It can be, it depends on our perspective. It depends on how we look at life, you know? All right, I'm going to look too at what are the factors of this connection. Now, yesterday in the video um, comments, someone wrote, can you look at the hidden um, the, the hidden intentions or if there's a hidden agenda? I was going to do that in the next video, but then I woke up with this strongly. So I may do another video today where I do look at that um, or, I'm, or I'll do it in tomorrow's video. But today I really want to stick with this energy because when I am guided, there's a reason why I'm guided. All right. So let's get to the bottom of this. What are the things affecting this relationship? I just shuffled and look what's on the bottom of the deck. Somebody's got an ego. Well, we all have egos and egos do have some positive points, but they can also, especially in love, really lead us astray. All 
Okay. So here are the things that are the factors. Wow. Moon cycle. <clears throat> this The moon cycle energy has been coming up strong. Okay. <clears throat> So this energy signature is that energy where it's like, man, if I were living in a dream world and I didn't have this persistent fear of being hurt and suffering and I wasn't running away from suffering and this was just like an ideal situation where I knew I wasn't going to get hurt and where I knew everything was going to work out exactly like my wildest dreams, then I would be with this person. Nothing would keep me away from this person. This relationship is my fantasy. This person is the person that of my dreams. But it's not. We're not living in a fantasy world. We're living in a real world. And in the real world, we have to free ourselves. And we have to release all the barriers that we have within us that prevent us from being able to really experience the fantasy. We cannot, we cannot break down someone else's barriers. We can't. Sorry, you guys. All of a sudden, I just had to sneeze. Um, we can't. We can't fix someone else. All we can do is love them. That's all we can do. And we can fix ourselves. We can turn our attention inward and we can say, what wounding am I carrying? What limiting beliefs am I carrying? What can I free myself from that will get me closer to being able to open up to receive this kind of fantasy energy or like to being to be doing my part to be able to show up as the person that I want to be in this relationship, the strongest version of myself for this partnership. And if both people are doing that, then guess what? You're both going to show up and guess what? It's going to work out. Um, but here, there's a lot of fear of the unknown. And this is because we have to risk a biscuit for emotional intimacy. We have to allow ourselves to be vulnerable without knowing what the outcome is going to be. You know? Um, and when we do that, we are putting our ego on the line. We are putting our pride on the line. And some people simply cannot. They are too fragile. They are too wounded. They, they, they cannot take another blow. So they are just protecting themselves at all costs. So we have to be willing to open up to the unknown and we have to be in a position of strength to know that whatever comes from this experience, we can handle it so that we can truly give ourselves to it so that we can take a true leap of faith. A leap of faith is, I don't know how the heck this is going to work out. I don't know what the result is going to be. I don't know who's going to show up. I don't know what their intentions really are. I don't know what they're thinking. I don't know what they're capable of as far as relationships and love go, but I know they're worth it. And I know that I'm strong enough to withstand whatever happens. And I believe that the universe is on my side here. So whatever happens, it's in my highest and best. You know what I'm saying? And if, if we're not in that position, then we're hedging our bets. If we're not in that position, then we're not giving ourselves fully. We're not truly taking a leap of faith. We have one foot in the door and one foot out the door. Because really, we're ready to run. You also seem to have a factor of distance. The distance can always be, it's going to be different for everyone. This can be physical difference, distance. And I definitely get that that is a factor for a lot of you. That in order just to see each other in real life, travel would be required. Or like at least a train or a car. Like so you may live on a different side of the city from someone. Or you may, you know, live in the same rural area. But like 
the, you can't just walk. You know what I mean? It's not like, you know, there is distance is a factor here. It can be physical distance. It can be emotional distance. It can be time that has passed between the last time you have seen this person and how do you then approach someone when you have not spoken to them in five years, in 10 years, in 20 years? How do you bridge that gap? Do they know where you're located? Do they know how to find you? I mean, these are all things. These can all be factors. And even if they did see you or they did were able to close this distance, do they know how to bridge the gap? You know, and is there a way to bridge the gap? Because if we've been standing here and choosing a different cycle time after time, you know, are we even the same people when we're coming back together? And this feminine has been hard at work. This feminine is working on something. Um, all right. So, you guys, this is just getting very, very messy. So, I'm going to just pick these guys up. I'll leave these here. The moon cycles thing, we do have these eclipses coming up in, I think it's April, like early April, the beginning of April. Um, you also had a blue moon in Pisces in September of last year. And um, it feels like there are significant moon cycles. I might get the moonology deck out if I feel like it's necessary um, so we can take a look at it again. Um, but we did just use it in a reading recently to look at timelines. All right. But I actually, you know what? I'm going to get it. Because moon cycles came up. Hysterically, it was out and I put it away. All right. Spirit, what can you tell us about these moon cycles? What what moon cycles are important for Pisces? What are you referring to with the moon cycles on the bottom of the deck for Pisces? Can you please clarify? Guys, this energy is coming up. This energy is fast moving. I'm just telling you. Full moon in Cancer was probably like December. The end of December may have been significant. You also have the new moon in Virgo. That's September. That's very close to the Pisces blue moon. Um, you also have the full moon in Leo, which we just had. I think it was like January 25th or something like that. And you have the new moon in Pisces, which will be coming up in uh, either the end of February or the beginning of March, I believe. And then you have the new moon. A new start is coming. So guys, we do have... Um, Hmm. There's so much Leo energy. It's just, it's insane. Um, we have, I want to say the next new moon might be the new moon in Pisces. I, I cannot remember for whatever reason right now. I haven't had enough coffee as well, but um, if we've already had the new moon in Aquarius, but you might want to just look that up. There's a heavy emphasis on this particular time period, the time period between the full moon in Leo and the new moon in Pisces is a heavy emphasis on this. And that's now that's what we're, where we are right now. And then you have the full moon in cancer and the new moon in Virgo. So something may have happened around the end of December or around the Pisces blue moon, um, or, you know, the end of August, September time period for you, or that may be highlighted coming up in the future. But right now, the time we're in right now, I'm getting this so strongly is very important, or this is a catalyst for change. There is an opportunity for change. There's an opportunity for something here to be revealed. All right, this is saying have faith in your dreams. Don't let pride get in your way. Meditate and contemplate. A new start is coming. It's a time to give rather than take. A personal issue reaches conclusion. There's some, some stuff is changing. Like as we speak, Pisces, that's definitely the vibe that I get from that. 
maybe we just needed the confirmation. Okay, so what is in this masculine's thoughts? What is, how, what is the masculine thinking about the feminine spirit? What is the masculine thinking about the feminine? What is the masculine thinking about the feminine? Well, the lovers is the only card that flips. Let me go through again. Two of swords on the bottom of the deck with that lovers card. This is someone who knows they have an important choice to make and they're not, they're stuck. They're not, they have not been open. They have not been willing to see it. They've been, um, how do I want to say? They've been sort of protecting themselves from this choice. They've been avoiding the choice. They've been avoiding, 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 avoiding. I'm getting that heavy emphasis on that. Like if I don't look at it, if I don't see it, if I don't let myself feel it, if I don't, then I can just move past this choice and not make it again. Or, you know, make the one, you know, the burning bush is in this for a reason. All right. We don't always make the right choice, you guys. We And we have choice and we don't always use choice for our highest and best. Oh my gosh. So... All right, this is definitely telling me this masculine has spent some time asking themselves, what do I want? And I feel like this is a masculine who possibly, when thinking about this choice in the past, has allowed themselves to go down all these paths of woulda, shoulda, coulda, of, well, it could go like this, well, it could go like that, or even feeling like they had a lot of options. Like, well, I can pursue my career, I can do this, I can do that. It, it almost feels as though this masculine has sort of gotten their life to a point where, you know, thinking about this kind of energy is unavoidable. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like they, by process of elimination, by choosing the other stuff every single time, they have realized, well, my happiness does not lie there. Well, I did that. That didn't make me happy. Well, I did that. That didn't make me happy. Well, I did that. It didn't make me happy. So now it's like the confusion that they felt like because they had options, it's like they've almost eliminated it themselves in that period with the two of swords of knowing that they had this choice, knowing that they had this soulmate connection, but of wanting to sort of avoid it. And now all of the distractions have seemingly kind of fizzled out or gone away. Um, and now it's like this person's really forced to think about what do I want? And I, look at that. They're coming towards you. This is what they want. Pisces. All right. What's in their heart space? What are they feeling about the feminine? What are they feeling about the feminine? Okay. Jesus. Two of cups. I, I just quit. I just, I, what, you guys don't even need me. You don't even need me. I mean, seriously, look at that. This person, you know, we saw that two of swords energy. They have been resistant to, they've been avoiding their heart. They've been avoiding what's in their heart because what's in their heart is a very clear message. You know, for this person, the lovers and the two of cups, there is, there's no one else for this person. It is like, it's like this person is like, I already made up my mind. I already met the person that I, you know, could see myself spending the rest of my life with. I may not have even considered or evaluated anyone else. The only thing that I have done is held back on giving to the situation or opening my heart to the situation. But my heart is very clear. My heart is, there's no one else. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> the heart you know how they say people don't remember what you say but they do remember how you made them feel with this sun card on the bottom of the deck that is coming through so strongly for me it's like 
I don't know when it happened. I don't know what it was exactly. I don't know what it is exactly about this person, but they're the only person I can actually really see myself with. And that is clear. And I think it is because of an experience of happiness. It is an experience of, boy, this person makes me feel alive. This person makes me feel happy. This person makes me feel like there is a purpose and a, um, that kind of like anything is possible. Like you really can be happy. Like the heart does something besides feel suffering in this world. Like there can be a different experience of the heart, um, when you open it up. With the sun in the heart space, this person has probably also been and healing some kind of wounding of the heart. And this may be sometimes, um, you know, especially when we come from a toxic family, until we uh, leave that situation or until we get some time, uh, like, it, you know, and some distance, it's like we can't really see how it's, we can't really see how toxic it is. Like even if we know it's toxic or even if we know that it hasn't always been a healthy situation for us, we can't really see it. But then when we move away from it, it, it just becomes more and more and more clear. And once things become very clear, they become kind of less painful. You know, it doesn't take away the experience of pain. It doesn't take away, you know, um, that... we have been affected and that that effect can be seen in various parts of our life or in various parts of our being. But it, it helps us to separate ourselves from it and to say, okay, that really wasn't me. That was this. But now what my responsibility is, is to find all the ways in which that's affected me and to clear it, to purge it, to release it, to let it go. And so there's this energy I'm getting with the star of maybe not somebody who, ha I mean, the, the sun, I don't know why I said the star. Yeah, this is someone who has experienced a lot of suffering. Yeah, see, this is the energy I'm getting. Okay, so this is someone who has had some kind of clarity of being able to say, I have suffered. I have I have distance from my suffering. In the distance from my suffering, I have seen that the suffering I experienced, you know, may have been the result of, you know, someone else's unhealed wounds projecting that onto me. It was very difficult. It was very hard. There was a lot of suffering. It was very draining. At times, I may have even felt like I was going to be done in by this suffering. The Ten of Swords is no joke. Um, but now I see it clearly. And I, I've begun to be able to see it differently and put it in a place where it's like, ah, I see. I may be a bit avoidant when it comes to matters of the heart because... I have experienced this suffering. So I'm seeing the ways in which this suffering has affected me. And now that I have clarity on it, I have the, the awareness that I don't maybe want this suffering to continue to make the choices of my heart for me. And because I can see this separately now, I can see this clearly now. Do you get what I'm saying here? I hope it's making sense. Um, some of you have experienced what I'm talking about and I feel like it will be... Yes, because that is the, this avoiding the suffering is making this person defendant, def, def, defendant. Um, what is that word that I'm looking for? It's not that it's, um, defensive and, um, and it's kind of blocked energy from being able to come into their heart. They have blocked this connection, um, in their heart space because, of this suffering and, and they can completely let that close out and they can build strength here and master themselves here and not let 
what other people have put on them throughout their life that has been painful have the same effect. Remember when we saw that hammer coming down on the egg and it was fragile? And when I was saying to you about the fragility, that it's like you have to come from a position of feeling strong enough to withstand whatever happens, whatever the net result is. This person is having that experience. They are building strength, mastering themselves so that this is no longer the determining factor, the fragility, the I can't take one more sword. One more sword will kill me. That's where they were coming from before. Now they're coming from a place of, oh, I have clarity. I've begun some kind of healing process. I'm not sure if it's intentional with the eight of pentacles and the sun. It could be intentional. Like this could be someone who has sought therapy or has sought some kind of answer. Um, oh no. Um, but, but whatever the case may be, what lies in this person's heart is they know this is a soulmate connection. They know that, that they could see themselves with this feminine for the long term. They see the value. They see the worth. They see that this person is nurturing and loving and caring with their heart. That when they have entrusted their heart in the hands of this person, this person has cared for it. They have not been able to reciprocate. They have not been able to give back to this person in the past what this person has offered them. So there is this energy of... you know, knowing that that has to be part of the equation. We have to balance out. We have to be able to reciprocate what is given to us in order for a relationship to be fair and balanced. So there is clarity in the heart space. All right. What is, oh, the, do you see what card just flip like that? The 10 of cups. What are these person's intentions? 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 Okay. Wow. Whoops. You see what the intentions are? I feel like this person really does want to end this cycle of suffering and stagnancy. Um, they, they themselves may have gone through a bit of a transformation. Wow. Wow. And wow. Um, the guys, the cards, the energy, it just keeps coming out. There's, you know, okay. So anyway, the intention is to apologize. The intention is to offer some heartfelt expression here with the page of, of cups hoping to celebrate hope they're hoping that you're happy to see them first of all second of all you're they hope that whatever they say to you makes you is what you need to hear in order to accept them in order to have some kind of celebration in order to have some kind of reconciliation it's like we're trading this suffering for this energy of of allowing our hearts to be happy allowing our hearts to rejoice in the company of each other, opening our hearts up to this thing rather than staying in this position of protecting ourselves because we can't handle any more suffering. This person's intention is to allow some kind of transformation to take place either so that they can show up and offer you something or showing up and offering you something to allow some kind of transformation to take place in this connection. Because this person really only sees their future with this feminine. And because they can't really stop thinking about this love and this, this relationship, it is somewhere always on their mind when they're by themselves, when they're thinking about what they really want. What actions is this person likely to take? Okay. All right, so I'm getting, we flip all these over. Oh my gosh. This is in the, the deck flipped, okay? But it stayed in the deck by itself flipped. So this is a separate message. Uh-huh. 
This person's intended actions are to have a new beginning. This person really does desire and want a new beginning, and they feel like it's going to begin with some kind of strong con con uh, conversation. And this person intends to have success with this conversation. This person, if there is a distance, they may plan on traveling to see you or they may be trying to like work out the details of coming to see you with the eight of pentacles and the chariot or working out a plan on how they'll make that happen. With the five of pentacles and the seven of swords, this person feels left out in the cold. But at the end of the day, this person knows that it's because of their own behavior that they're left out in the cold. They know that this is not like some kind of punishment by the feminine where the feminine isn't being understanding or accepting or something like that. This is a result of their own behavior that they're out in the cold. They may have ghosted. They may have run off with no explanation. They know that there is something here that they have to atone for in order to get back in. They may have let outside inter Look at this, you guys, seriously. Three fives right in a row. Look at this. Five of Pentacles, Five of Wands, Five of Cups. This person may have, you know, if this is somebody that had, you know, a, a friend group that was possibly a bad influence on them, and they may have let this, this group interfere, um, or they may have chosen this group, they may be in, well, I think they are in deep regret. This, this is all a result of this person trying to defend their heart trying to block their heart. This person not seeing things clearly in their heart, not being open to the clarity of their own heart. This person being blocked off. So they, they made these choices, right, that were not in alignment with their heart that led to this energy, this energy of, of letting outside interference interfere, the heavy regret, the heavy sorrow, the shame, the guilt that they let other people interfere and that they left this, this connection out in the cold. And now they want to come back in and they know that they have to make up for what, what their past behavior was, what they did when they were not in alignment. They can't just come back and be like, that never happened. I wasn't the same person back then. You know what I mean? They're going to have to, they're going to have to fight for this connection. They're going to have to fight for their happiness. All right, Pisces. Let's actually, before we go from the masculine's energy, I do just want to take one clarifier on the page of cups. What is the Page of Cups? Oh my God. The Lovers and the Page of Cups. This person wants to apologize for the choices that they have made. That they did not choose this in the past. That instead they chose the path of suffering. They were operating from a place of fear and sadness and wounding. Um, and they were not acting from a place of their authentic heart. And because of that, they feel like this. Because of that, they let other people interfere. Because of that, they were misaligned. Because of that, they did something that they're ashamed of. Let's go ahead and find out what that is. I will go ahead and cover that even though there's nothing there. Oof. Yeah, they were acting out of fear. Yeah, they were not empowered at all. Wow, they're coming back to make things right. Because look at that. They were acting out of fear. The emperor in reverse, the magician in reverse. This is someone who probably made a bunch of promises that they never delivered on. This is someone that didn't have the courage of their own convictions, that didn't feel strong enough to even follow what they felt and what they knew and what they have always known and what has always been in their heart. And now this person wants to make things right. I mean, you can't like, that's just about as obvious as it gets. All right. I'm going to tuck this in. Let's move over here to the feminine's energy. It's in the feminine's thoughts about the masculine, the feminine's thoughts about the masculine. Well, she doesn't see any action. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. <gasps> ah, 
The feminine knows her worth and knows her value. And she knows that no matter what, no matter how bad she may want to close the distance here or that she may want to be with this masculine, she has to sit in her, her value. She has to sit in her worth. She has to let him figure it out for himself. There is a part of her that is really, really hoping and may even a little part of her be waiting for this masculine to come back, hoping, watching, looking. Um, but the, the feminine in her head is seeing this masculine as somebody who really doesn't know how to prioritize their own happiness. They're like an empty cup that she has tried to fill over and over and over and over again, has put all of her energy and all of her love and everything into, and it has been to no avail because there's a hole in the bottom of the cup and you just have to keep pouring. She knows her worth. She knows she deserves more than emptying herself for this masculine over and over again. So she's giving this masculine time and space. The, the hangman card does also represent a sacrifice, and I do feel that way. I feel like this femin, feminine does feel the energy of having sacrificed her own happiness or her own worth, possibly in the past, for this masculine because this masculine was not in an energy to like do it themselves or to really show up in, in the past. Um, she hopes that this masculine gets his act together and closes the distance between them and, and shows up in her harbor. But I don't feel like she's counting on it. She's realistic about it. She understands what the issue is here and she understands what she has to do. But man, is she hoping that they come together again. And she feels like it could be a matter of divine time she's invested she invested in it to begin with it's in the heart space oh man oh this is heartbreaking oh 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 my god in the feminine's heart space this feminine wonders if she can ever be emotionally content with another person besides this masculine, she really does wonder. She wonders if this masculine's wounded heart is going to prevent her from being able to experience the highest level of happiness, the highest level of emotional contentment that shared with another person in this feminine's heart. She really doesn't want to be alone. Um, she, she doesn't, yeah, she's capable of being strong. Yeah. She's capable of going out there and conquering the world. But in this, this feminine's heart, she wants to belong somewhere. She wants to feel connected. She wants to feel a part of something shared, a part of a couple. But this masculine has made this feminine feel in her heart of hearts, like she's just an option and like she has no choice but to walk away or to pull her energy back or to not live in that emotion. But this feminine is very well aware that in her heart of hearts, what she wants is this masculine. what her heart wants is this masculine and she hopes for a change boy does she hope for a change she feels left out in the cold she hopes for a reconciliation she hopes to rise above this mess Ugh, heartbreaking when you feel your fate is tied to someone else and that you may not be able to ever find anyone else that oh my gosh Oh, wow. Look at the mirroring energy here in the feminine's intentions. She's not making any kind of move in the feminine's intentions. She, um, sh her pride will not allow her to suffer anymore for this connection. Her pride will not let her make herself small or, 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 or accept anything less than unconditional love. Her pride will not let her. She knows that she deserves this, what she wants. And this has been hard for her, very hard for her. She has had to put a lot of work in. She has had to stay strong. I feel like this feminine, her intention is to focus on work, to focus on whatever this is that she's building outside of this masculine. She holds a space for love for this masculine. She's not trying to hate on him or have any ill will toward him. She knows that she does hold this space of love that will never go away. And her intention isn't to resist it or to fight it. It's to focus on something else. 
because her pride is not going to let her suffer for this again unnecessarily. Mm -mm. What actions is the feminine going to take here? Nope. This feminine is not going to allow her life to become unbalanced by this masculine anymore. This this feminine may have blocked this energy. She is resisting it. Um, you know, she's resisting the urge. Wow, she may actually really want to reach out and communicate. Or there's a part of her at times that gets a little reckless or like really just wants to reach out or really just wants to make a move. But she's holding back because she's not going to suffer for this again. This, this feminine w w is open and receptive. If this masculine comes back, she will, I feel like open this up with open arms. If they, they come back in the right kind of energy. Um, but this relationship has, has really caused this feminine to question her worth and her value. And she's not willing to do that for this or any other relationship. All right, guys, um, let's dive in with some message cards it, this is completely up to the masculine at this point. I feel like the feminine is done. The feminine has turned her focus somewhere else. The masculine is still focused on the feminine. Here, before we go, let me just take a few on what the best possible outcome could be here. Like in this month. Okay, let's say this month. Let's put the parameter on what is the best possible outcome in February for this relationship? For this pair? Holy crap. Six of Swords, the High Priestess, the Two of Swords, the Queen of Pentacles in reverse, the Ten of Cups, and the Tower. Holy heck. Um, I feel that this month the best possible outcome is... I feel the feminine... Um, There is this energy of the feminine sort of releasing this like hardcore grip on, um, you know, I know my value. I know my worth. I'm sitting in it. I'm not even open. You know, it, it's not that it's not open, but this is a very grounded energy that it's like, you know, I, I'm, I'm very in the here and the now. And if I don't see you coming toward me, then you're not coming toward me. There's kind of a release of this energy and, and a movement into more trusting our intuition or even getting intuitive hits or even possibly dream sign synchronicities. Um, the Six of Swords can be the masculine coming here to try to make peace, to break the stagnancy, to try to come in with some kind of communication to break the stagnancy or to show that they have broken the stagnancy within their own life. With the Ten of Cups here, there is an opportunity potentially for some kind of attempt at an emotional at emotional contentment between these two. With, with the Tower, this is something that is shocking. It's something that like sort of comes in out of the blue. So let me just clarify. I want to clarify the Six of Swords. Yeah, the somebody I, I feel it's this masculine may be walking away from something in their life, may be really willing and ready to make a different choice instead of double down with the eight. This is a choice that just keeps coming up. This is something that keeps coming around. This person may be actually really willing to put in the work to have the one to be with the one that they want. This feminine may be even getting intuitive hits. Yeah, this person may be walking away from conflict to try to make progress over here. Eight, eight, eight. Wow, okay. The tower. Mm-hmm. Yeah, guys. This person is having possibly a breakthrough where they know, oh my God, look at this. Oh my God. I mean, read them and wait. The tower, this is someone coming in really unexpectedly. Here's that grasshopper spirit with the full card showing up with the ace of pentacles. This, this is a crossroads. This is a moment where this masculine can potentially open up to a breakthrough that causes him to, to come forward and communicate this, this masculine, this is on their mind. They want to 
They want to offer some kind of either apology or some kind of heartfelt thing. They want a celebration. They want a reconciliation. They feel it's going to come through communication. This person is trying to get their confidence up to come through strong and say what needs to be said and to show this feminine, hey, I'm ready to go after what I want now. I'm ready to put the work in here for you. You are the one for me. All right. Pisces, no matter how I see it, no matter what decks I get, it's just like this energy is very strong right now. Um, it may not be everyone's energy or it may not be, you know, everyone's story. In fact, you know, these are general readings. So parts of these probably are and parts of these probably aren't. And it's energy. So it's always on a spectrum. But like, honestly, this has been very consistent. If you're dealing with a water sign, I check on you from afar. I feel like I can't give you what you need. Our story isn't over yet. I will find my way back to you one day. You are always on my mind. This is what we see. If you're dealing with a fire sign, you have, I feel terrible for hurting you. Fights, arguments, conflict. They feel like they're the cause of it. Um, I'm intimidated by you. Can we start over? And this was shooting out of the deck, Twin Flame. All right, if you're dealing with an earth sign, you are getting, I can see myself with you for the long term. This was just a fling. See, this person may have told you that, but look at that. They can actually see themselves with you for the long term. Reminiscing, and I think the world of you. Jealous and possessive on the bottom of the deck. Air sign. I have sexual fantasies about you. There is a third party. I want to work things out. I feel like I ruined everything. I gave in to temptation. Pisces, this is what I have for you today. I hope this helps. I hope that, you know, you can either see yourself here or not. You can really resonate. You can either know if this is your story or not. If this does resonate, please let me know. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and going through all of this today. I know this is a bit of a very long reading, um, but you know, I just felt really guided. I might get back on here and really look at some, you know, like what are the blockages? What is preventing this? You know, like really just do a deep dive into, you know, the parts that could be causing a delay or slowing it down. But I mean, look at this energy. It's very consistent, even down to the full card at the end with this grasshopper spirit. And this has been coming out in every reading. So I feel like you guys know enough about tarot to like be able to look at these energies too and see for yourself what you intuitively believe and think by the reading. Anyway, this is what I have for you. I hope it helps. Um, until next time, I send you off with all my very best. Always, always, always. Bye-bye.